Washington and the White House are dealing with the fallout from President Trump's intervention in the Roger Stone case. The longtime friend of Mr. Trump is expected to be sentenced next week after he was convicted on charges stemming from the Mueller probe. The Justice Department is seeking a lighter sentence after the president criticized the original recommendation on Tuesday. The story grabbed headlines all week long. For the man at the center of it all, controversy is something he has never shied away from. The Netflix documentary, Get Me Roger Stone, takes a closer look at how the 67-year-old has shaped American politics over the past few decades. Take a look at this clip. I'm an agent provocateur. Political strategist. Controversial as you can get. An incredible capacity for treachery. Win at all cost mentality. When people think of Washington corruption, they think of Roger Stone. Those who say I have no soul, those who say I have no principles, are losers. Those are bitter losers. Yeah, bitter losers. Uh, Dylan Bank joins us now. He is a co-director of the documentary Get Me Roger Stone. Good hey, to see you. Dylan. Great to be back. Um, so, Dylan, let's start at the beginning. I think it's so remarkable when you see those images of Roger Stone in his early days. Uh, how did he get involved in politics, and what was his role, I guess, beginning in the, in the Nixon administration? Well, Roger was a political prodigy. He tells a story about how, before he became a Republican, when he was in elementary school, how he swung the Nixon candidate. Kennedy election, and he was voting for Kennedy because he liked his hair, by telling everybody, that uh, the kids in their, their school election, that they were going to, Nixon was going to make them have school on Saturdays. <laughs> and that's his own little legend of his, how his first dirty trick was started. Right. But he was a real political prodigy. When other people his age were in uh, the young Republican groups, Roger was the youngest person in Creep, which was the uh, cr committee to reelect President Nixon, and they called themselves Creep, by the way. Right, yeah. And uh, then later he became the youngest person called to the Watergate hearings at age 17. And as he says in our documentary, his parents were mortified, but he thought it was cool. <laughs> so you can tell from what you've just said in a little snippet that we that we showed, you know, there's sort of a, a win at all costs kind of attitude. Like as long as you're winning, then you're doing the right thing. But I think that people may not really fully understand the outsized influence that he has had, and not just him, but he had sort of a group with him um, uh, on, on politics in Washington. So can we talk about sort of beyond the man, the, the way he changed the way politics was done? The great irony of Donald Trump saying he was going to drain the swamp is that his main people, Paul Manafort, Roger Stone, mm -hmm. were literally the architects of the swamp. Mm -hmm. They were the people in uh, in the 80s who had the superstar a political uh, c a group called uh, Black Manafort and Stone. Uh, and they largely created the super PAC as we know it now and the um, the smear campaign. They were really on the edge of the massive smear campaign. Take a few elements of somebody and pick at them with negative research and negative ad campaigns. And uh, that was one of the really large things that they added to it. Yet another one was that they combined campaign with uh, lobbying. That was not officially illegal, but it was considered improper. And as we see now with Donald Trump, uh, the person who was uh, very much influenced by Roger Stone and that group of people, uh, has taken on that philosophy nationally. And but Roger Stone was sort of like one of the first, um, I guess, political backers, if you want, of the president or, or Donald Trump for president. I mean, way before anyone has even taken him seriously, Roger Stone was like, that's my guy. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things we learned making this film was that political consultants don't sit around twiddling their thumbs waiting for the phone to ring. They identify somebody and say, you should be president, you should run for Congress, you could be all these things and hire me. And one of Roger's brilliant strokes was right away seeing the influence that Donald Trump had. But yeah. Dylan, I have a so here's the question, you know, is Roger Stone really a political genius or is he someone who is extremely cynical and through a mix of exploiting our laws, exploiting uh, the fact that people are sometimes not as informed as they should be, uh, an electorate that is not as informed as it should be, um, and a person who is running for office who might have less than ideal reasons for doing so. In other words, is he really that smart or is he just like, I'm appealing to the very base desires of humans at, uh, at the end of the day and I know what gets them. And this is what you need to do to get them. And if you're down for it, if you want to make a deal with me, I'll get you the presidency. But isn't that smart? 
Mm-hmm. Is it? I don't know. I just, I just, I'm not that smart. And I just <laughs> delayed it all out, right? The question well, is, can I do it? There's, there's two sides of that because Roger uh, will constantly have five schemes going. Four of them will bomb. One of them will do okay. well, and he'll take credit for it mm-hmm. and say the other five didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the other hand, Roger is incredibly intelligent in the political and uh, publicity world. He, Donald Trump is not very well read. He's kind of like a Cretan. Roger Stone's nothing like that. He is extremely well read. He's very intelligent. He studies advertising and publicity and um, uh, uh, propaganda, and that's how he became a real master of it. And if you Trump, listen to Stone's rules, hate is a more powerful motivator than love. That is what that really was my gets point him. about the cynicism. And I and and what I mean, okay, here we are in 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 the age of Trump. But going back to Nixon, and we showed pictures of him with President Bush. I mean, what was it about those individuals that said, "I want to hitch my wagon to Roger Stone," even in the early days? Right from the beginning, Roger's been attracted to the bad boys of politics. Uh, He has the Nixon tattoo on his back to really exemplify that to everyone and, of course, to piss liberals off, as he says. (laughs) But uh, as I mentioned earlier, he was really attracted to the Nixonian group of people who called themselves creep. His idea is that if he does that dirty trick, if he manipulates you, then he, he won, then he's smarter than you. And he is the one who is running the show. Mm -hmm. But I think sort of the curious thing that you kind of address a little bit in your documentary is despite the fact that he's been very, very close with President Trump since the very, very beginning, before even President Trump considered running for office, and he's, I guess, in the inner circle, he's kind of not. He didn't get a job in the White House, right? right? He probably Uh, didn't want one, right? Did he want one? Well, he says he doesn't, but you're actually, you really uh, caught the, uh, uh, the nail on the head of what got him in trouble with the FBI. Because that's what really uh, what he was trying to do. He mm-hmm. was trying to get back in Trump's graces by overplaying his connection to WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks and Julian Assange largely did not trust him. And he tried very hard to get in with their good graces, made it no secret. He and Alex Jones held publicity events trying to get everybody to listen to their releases about Hillary's emails. But they never quite trusted him. Mm-hmm. But that's not what he was apparently telling Trump and his group, and he was trying very hard to get back in with them, and it backfired. So I'm actually really curious about your take on, uh, I don't know if you read the transcripts, of, oh, yeah. okay, because uh, um, you fo- spent years just following this guy around with this sort of stream of consciousness conversations, right? When you read the transcripts and you saw what he, it's alleged that he did, you know, what did you think? Did you think, that's the Roger I know, or, you know, what was your kind of first reaction? My first reaction was I was absolutely shocked that Roger was so careless. Mm. Roger is from the Nixon era, as we said. He's supposed to be committing his crimes in a dark basement lit only by the orange glow of your cigarette. Right. He was texting his lies and then texting somebody saying, do the lies or I'll destroy you. Right. What is wrong with you, Roger? That was my point about, like, (laughs) the intelligence factor because, I mean, I always pictured Roger Stone, and even in the doc, it's sort of clear that he's like Paulie from Goodfellas, right? He never actually writes anything down. He just tells one person. But in this case, he did all these things wrong. And now... I wonder if the fact that the president is ready to essentially burn down the Justice Department in an effort to get uh, his buddy a lighter sentence, is this another con by Roger Stone? In other words, he's getting the president to do his bidding and imperiling our democratic institutions. Absolutely. This is the winner-take-all mentality. We won by one vote or we won the Electoral College. We're in charge. We'll do whatever we want. And just because it's improper, just because they'll get criticized, that doesn't matter. And now, just because it might necessarily be illegal, they even have a get out of jail free card for the time mm-hmm. being. And they've staked everything on Trump winning again. Uh huh. So, so we don't know what's going to happen. We know that the president would like to see him get a lighter sentence, and he certainly has the power to pardon him, pardon him completely if he wants to. But if he ends up serving time, his buddy Manafort is behind bars right now. Do you think that will uh, change him in terms of his taste for politics? Will he want to get out of politics? Um, I think that depends on how long he does. If he does nine years, I think he's going to come out just in a completely different stage in his life. But I think it's going to be really hard to keep the fire that drives Roger Stone down. Uh, He... The fire that drives him is what got him going in elementary school, is what causes him to flame out and make these phone calls where he's not thinking because he's so obsessive. Mm -hmm. It's happened to him multiple times in his career where he's flamed out because of things like that. And then it's that same fire that drives him to keep going and to get back in the game and claw his way back into national attention. Real quick, before we let you go, um, what are are his interpersonal relationships like? I mean, even Al Capone had a very soft spot for his uh, son. Um, Mm -hmm. You always hear about people who've done horrific, terrible things in their business or in politics and yet are 
you know, wonderful mm -hmm. family He's man. He's married for quite a while, for right? Mm -hmm. some, some time. Roger's very His normal parents. in person. He's funny, he's charismatic and intelligent. He's able to relate to people, especially political people, because no matter how many uh, people in common that you like or dislike. Roger has so many enemies, he'll find an enemy in common that you share, and he has all these jokes already to rip on them, and you can endear yourself to him. But it's also, in part, all professional wrestling to people like Roger and also Donald Trump. Uh, that's part of what allows them to be uh, so evil. Yeah. Uh, their attitude is, it's all fair and love and politics, so you're a child molester. Wow. Wow. So, so listen, um, I need to tell everyone, if you haven't seen yeah. the, um, no matter out. what slide you fall on politically or whatever, it's just a fascinating, just a really fascinating character doc. study. Yeah. If you don't want to focus on the politics, just the character alone. Um, Get Me Roger Stone is a documentary. It's on Netflix. Right. Dylan Bank, thank you so much. Thank you, Dylan. Great to be here.